two guys I got to ask you about. Uh, Daniel Popper of The Athletic, who's a good guy who covers the Chargers, was on 95.7 The Game, and they discussed Joey Bosa. And he said, you know, what do you think of Joey Bosa, you know, reuniting with Nick on the Niners? Popper said on the radio, I wouldn't rule it out. At the end of the day, Joey Bosa, he's been pretty public about the fact that he always wanted to play with his brother. He's got a base salary of 15 this year, 17 next year. I'm not super fluent in Niner cap, but that's what you would be taking on for, you know, 2024 and 2025. So we'll see. Um, what, what do you think of the idea? I mean, obviously, you know, um, if Popper goes on to say, I think the Chargers should at least listen. If they're listening, then I think there's a number of places that make sense for Joey Bosa. He spent his entire career with the Chargers, number three pick overall in 2016, four-time Pro Bowler. He's had injuries the last two years, only nine sacks in the last two years combined, only 14 games in the last two years combined. What do you think of Bosa? What do you think of Joey coming over? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Is it fit? Does it not fit? Certainly a fascinating conversation, and I think it comes down to how much he's going to demand if the Chargers let him go. And from the Chargers' standpoint, I think it's a $14 million cap savings if they cut him pre-June 1, which for them makes a lot of sense with the new head coach, a new general manager, as they try to tinker with that roster. They have their quarterback. They have some other really good pieces, and Joey Boats has barely been able to play how much does he want? And going back to the Chris Jones conversation too, who do you let go of on that defensive line in order to make this happen? Because the candidate that a lot of people bring up is Eric Armstead. But pre-June 1, dead money is $25.8 million and the cap savings is 2.49. So that doesn't make sense at all. And then post-June 1, dead money is $10.3 million, but the cap savings is 18 million. So pretty much 8 million there. With Joey Bosa, you think about what him and his brother could be if Joey can stay healthy. They're two great edge rushers who love ball, love getting in the lab, iron sharpens iron, love perfecting their game. But I'd be scared shitless of Joey Bosa coming to the Niners just because of the injury history here. And you look at his career, rookie year, plays 12 games, year two, 16, year three, seven, year four, 16, year five, 12, year six, 16. Last two years though, respectively in 2022, five games played and nine games played. Now when he's been healthy, the sack production has been great year by year, 10 and a half, 12 and a half, five and a half, 11 and a half, seven and a half, 10 and a half, two and a half, six and a half. So even though he's missed time, even when he's missed time, the sack production in those games is really good. Now, if Joey Bose is like, hey, I made enough money. It's been my dream to play with Nick on the other side. Let's sign a one-year deal. Let's cause some havoc. Let me up my value a little bit. Let's chase the Super Bowl. I'll take three to $5 million. Then I'm all in because then the financial risk isn't really all there. But If the Chargers let him go, he wants a multi-year deal. And even if it's $15 million, I'd honestly maybe rather have Chase Young, who's 24, whose physical presence is really impressive. Can you get him to buy in with the effort issues and him actually giving a shit? And he's younger, less injury issues. I'd rather just have a player like that back. But if Joey Bosa wants to come at a highly discounted rate, and then that allows you to also bring back a Cleveland Furl and a Randy Gregory, and you have Nick Bosa, Joey Bosa, Cleveland Furl, Randy Gregory, I'm down with that defensive line rotation at the edge spots, and I'd at least entertain it. What do you think of the Wilkins fit? Because I'm intrigued by Christian Wilkins, man. I, I, I know he's kind of a weird guy. He's grabbed guys nuts and stuff, and he's done some weird stuff, let's be honest. But the guy is scheme versatile. He's a he's a good he's a good high character guy outside of grabbing guys balls and that kind of thing, but um but I mean I like Christian Wilkins as a player I like him as a rusher I like him against the run I like him in that thirty four but I like him in a four three at tackle I like him in the four three at end if you want to go kind of a bigger look um do you think what's going to happen with Wilkins I mean I was shocked that he wasn't franchised by Miami. I was surprised too, because Miami is 
an interesting team that has invested heavily in some players, haven't invested heavily in other players. This is a homegrown player who you took with the 13th overall pick in the 2019 draft, and now you're not going to pay him when you've paid other players. And I think with Christian Wilkins, he's a unique build because he's not a traditional like 330-pound defensive tackle. He's 6'4", 310, and I like him against the run. And the Niners need a better run-stuffing defensive tackle. He can also get after the quarterback. He's got a really quick first step, and he's really powerful. He can pack a punch where little swim move, little power rush, he can get by you. He had nine sacks this past year. He's never really been a massive sack artist. Two sacks, one and a half, four and a half, three and a half, and nine in his first five years in the NFL. But in Vic Fangio's system, he kind of broke out where he had those nine sacks this past year, what's the price tag for him? I think it's going to be steep. I think it's $20, $25 million for a player who came into the league at 24. So he's a little bit older at the end of that five-year rookie contract. So he's going to be 29 years old this year. Again, though, what do you do at defensive tackle? You can't move on from Hargrave. We talked about the big cap hit with Eric Armstead if you want to move on. Is this a player, the splash player, where you're like, well, it helps us with sack production. It helps us against the run as well. We're willing to make an investment in that player. I don't think it makes a lot of sense. I do like the player, though, a lot. How many years have you covered the Niners? This what was your first year covering? 2021. Covering so this will be my fourth season, 2024, covering the team. Okay, so you you didn't necessarily cover them when they had DJ Jones, but there was a t- some. Talk I did, early. I did last year. Oh, okay, twenty twenty one was his last year, and uh, okay, he was awesome. he was really good. Yeah, well, I mean, the guy. First of all, he's a great guy. I yes. mean, besides that, I mean, you know, that's all secondary, really. Uh, but it always always helps, and and he is a great guy. Um, but this guy is just, I think, absolutely one of the great run defenders in the A gap in the league. Um, you know, you're talking about a guy, 10 and a half inch hands, six, one, three twenty. Um, but you know what I love about him? He plays the game on his feet. He's a force against the run. He's a freaky combination of strength and quickness. Benjamin Albright, I bring him up because, um, according to Benjamin Albright, um, he says a, a number of Broncos and he names DJ Jones likely gone. Uh, because of their cap situation. The Niners drafted him in 2017 in the sixth round. Broncos signed him away to a three-year, $30 million deal. There wasn't a single person in the room that begrudged DJ for leaving, but he has been sorely missed. He's got short area quickness. He's got enormous weight room strength. In a lot of ways, I think he would solve their inside run uh, issues and make them better against the tush push with Philly make them better on the goal line, better in short yardage. The Niners have been a joke um, as far as short yardage D, and I don't even care what the numbers say. They give up any yard that another team wants to have. They don't. They didn't do that under DJ. What, what do you think? Could, could Denver pay some of that money? Niners give a day three pick and, and bring a guy like uh, Jones back in the fold? I, to me, that's the ideal addition to their defensive front. Because as you said, Hargrave ain't going anywhere and he's a pass rusher. So the guy complimenting him inside has got to be a fire hydrant. You run defender of the highest order. And that's that's what DJ is. Yeah. He's literally the perfect fit for what the Niners need. And if you address edge rusher with some of the players that we've been talking about, and then you have Kalia Davis and DJ Jones as your backup defensive tackles, and maybe you draft another one behind Eric Armstead and Javon Hargrave. I love the makeup of that defensive front. And DJ Jones, the Niners have really missed him. In 2021, he really came into his own and was awesome. I think he had 10 tackles for loss as a rotational player, made some big, big plays in some critical moments, especially in the playoffs. There was not any chance in hell the Niners were going to pay him a three-year, $30 million contract. In fact, the Broncos probably regret that because he's not worth $10 million per year. But is he worth being a backup defensive tackle who solves your issues against the run and you've been gashed when teams run right up the gut against you and has pass rushing ability? I think that he's a perfect fit for those reasons. And this is all part of the Russell Wilson fallout, which goes down as one of the worst trades of all time and one of the worst contract extensions all time. 
He was so bad and unbearable that the Broncos were eating all of this money and Sean Payton hated him so much. He said, we'll eat that money. Just get out of my face and get out of the building that now you have to let go of Justin Simmons. You have to bring back Tim Patrick on a reworked deal. And now you either have to trade DJ Jones. I think he could be cut because of this reason. He's got a cap charge and a cap hit of $12.9 million for 2024 for Denver. But the dead cap hit is only $2.9 million. So it's not that much. So if they let go of him, they eat 2.9 and then they don't have to pay him that huge cap number of nearly $13 million. Trading for him, I think, could be an option if the Broncos want to eat some of that money too. Late round pick swaps, sure. And I'll, I'll, I'll pay some of that money too if it's like 4 or $5 million because I understand his importance to what the Niners need, how he understands the system how he's complimented some of the players on this defensive line and Armstead and Bosa before, I think he'd be a really, really good player. His PFF numbers last year weren't great. Overall grade of 56, 14 hurries, 18 pressures though. And you'll take that from a backup defensive tackle. That's one of the players who I talked about on, uh, what was that Thursday show on the Niners report, who I'm like, man, if this is a possibility, I'm all in. If the money makes sense, because I think the scheme fit makes a lot of sense. And I like the player a lot. Couple more minutes with Chase Senior. Always enjoy Fridays with Chase here on the Krug Show. We're brought to you by Pig and a Pickle. Um, uh, I, I'll get this. Well, let me just get this one out of the way. Josina Anderson listed the Niners as a stopping, uh, a possible sp- a spot for OBJ. We've been talking about OBJ and the Niners for so long. I just don't think that OBJ. He at this point, you want a receiving core that complements one another. So what? piece to the Niners need to complement what they have. They need like Tyler Harrell from Louisville or Miami. They need Danny Gray. They need that guy who's going to take the top off the defense. That's the complimentary piece they need. They don't need another slowish guy who's going to, you know, take up uh, red zone targets. They need to be throwing the ball to Debo and if not Debo, JJ and if not JJ, Ayuk. you know what I mean? He, I don't see Josina was looking at that solely from from OBJ's perspective. Like, I bet she has a relationship with OBJ. Got on the horn and said, "OBJ, where would you like to play?" And he listed those places, and she wrote it down and put it into a report. I don't think OBJ is a fit from the Niners' perspective. I think it's a fit from her perspective and his perspective. Uh, wh- what did you think when you saw OBJ to the Niners? It's so funny when name value players like this who are really popular become available and people are like, Odell Beckham Jr., can you imagine him on this Niners offense? Right, right. He hasn't had a quality year or more than 1,000 yards receiving since 2019. And it doesn't sound like that was that long ago. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here in 2024. And he's had injury issues. And while the injuries have gone up, the production has gone down. He's lost a step. I did think that he was really solid for the Rams in the playoffs, in the Super Bowl, before he tore that ACL. This year, 565 yards. But is the drama and are the antics worth it when the player isn't the same caliber player that he once was? I don't think so. And let's be real. The injuries have been occurring for a really long time. They started in 2017 and they've been reoccurring since then. So him out of the slot, I actually think it could work because he's shifty going up against some nickel slot corners or some linebackers. I think he can beat those types of players. And in that offense for Baltimore, almost 600 yards isn't terrible, but in a deep wide receiver class, why wouldn't you just draft and develop a young stud wide receiver who's a better player who might even be cheaper. And this is where the pick and missing on Danny Gray, because I think we can chalk it up as a miss, really hurts them. Because a vertical burner with Ayuk, Debo, George Kittle, Christian McCaffrey, it would be awesome for this team. But he's done zilch since getting drafted in the third round. Another third round miss for this front office, by the way, at SMU. He was a 4-3, 40-yard dash guy. He was a combine darling, but hasn't gotten the trust of Kyle Shanahan. And that miss has hurt San Francisco, but I'm willing to go back to the well and draft a wide receiver in the first, second, or third round. And maybe you draft them and they have a secondary role for this team this year. And then if you need to make that difficult decision of moving on from a Debo 
if you can't bring back a Jawan Jennings because another team gives him a DJ Jones level contract as far as overpaying a player that that other organization really likes, I'm down to draft and develop a wide receiver in hopes that they can become maybe a Brandon Ayuk down the road, maybe a Debo Samuel type of player like an Xavier Leggett, who, by the way, is six foot, 220 pounds, and was a sub four, five, 40 yard dash guy. He's awesome, man. Yeah. Leggett is really, really good. Uh, AG asked this one. He says, I really feel like Luke McCaffrey fits the mold as a wide receiver on this team. Fast, strong, good middle of the field. I agree. And blocks and high character. You were in Indy and you had a chance to face up. I'm jealous, by the way. It was awesome. Uh, you were in Indy and you were, in, you were in Mobile too? I was not in Mobile, no. Oh, um, that was right. a little bit too close to the Niner Super Bowl run and I knew I was going to Vegas. Okay. But you were in Indy and you had a chance to talk to Niner people. You also had a chance to talk to uh, prospects. What do you think? Are the do you think the Niners are would be more likely to go after a Brendan Rice or a Luke McCaffrey? Um, I know this. Um, you know, Christian loves the idea of playing with Luke. I mean, really, really badly wants it. It will be pushing for it. You know, what I mean, he will have the conversation with John Lynch. Hey, John, don't forget my guy. Um, the Niners do have two thirds and two fourths, and this is where this kid's going to go. They could easily wind up with Luke McCaffrey. What, what did you think of McCaffrey versus rice? If you could have one of those guys, who would you, who would you rather have? Yeah, they're different players. And Luke right. actually ran faster than Christian at the combine. And he started his college career as a quarterback. He made the switch to wide receiver. He went to rice and, he put up really, really good numbers his last two years as a full-time wide receiver. It's so funny, too. He sounds identical to Christian and looks just like a young Ed, who, by the way, in his day was an all-pro. So yeah. really good genes. And then their mom was a soccer stud at Stanford. Their other brother was really good. He started his college career as a quarterback at Michigan. So Luke, I think was, Luke was all-conference this year at Rice in year one yeah. playing wide receiver. Yeah. And it's impressive. I, it's really impressive to make that positional switch and then to be that good out of the slot, a shifty quality footwork, reliable hands, fast guy out of the slot, who, by the way, is 6'2", 200 pounds. So he's taller than Christian, I think would be an awesome addition. And yeah, his last two years, he had 723 receiving yards and six touchdowns in 2022 and then 992 and 13 touchdowns this past year. So he can play. He's legit. He's fast. He's shifty. He could be a mismatch nightmare out of the slot. It's a fit. And then Brendan Rice is like a 4 5 40 yard dash guy. He's a little bit bigger and bulkier than his dad, Jerry. But his production with Caleb Williams throwing him the rock was really good too. But I think he's more of a slower perimeter wide receiver. So I think the player that makes more sense for what the Niners need is actually Luke coming out of the slot. And Christian said in the lead up to the Super Bowl on opening media night, I would love the opportunity to play with Luke. And look, I don't think you can rule this out. Luke has met with the Niners multiple times since the Senior Bowl. Brendan had a formal meeting with San Francisco and in Indianapolis. Frank Gore Jr. has met informally with the Niners. I think one of those three is a Niner via the draft. Frank Gore, maybe late rounds or a UDFA, and we have a little bit of a family business, family reunion type of deal to talk about. Yeah, no, and and uh, and it's not like I'm about this because I'm that guy that needs, you know, the sons of Niners to play. I like these guys. I, I mean, I like I like all three of those players. I, I saw the Shrine game, and I saw Gore's kid get loose. All right, last question for you. We got we got two supers. Mike Nolan says, any chance for Niners draft for Michael James out of Oregon? Yeah, thank you. Uh, let's hope not. I my, my my prediction is if they do, he'll fumble in the Super Bowl. Uh, <laughs> boxing fan times four says Odell is Vaughn Miller 2.0, just looking for an easy ring. Uh, ain't nothing wrong with that. All right, here we go. Last question. If we had a sponsor, a major sponsor. Let's just say we're our channels were like you know the the Niner Channel version of like the Beast, okay, uh, Mr. Beast, and we had somebody saying we're going to put a hundred grand on the table for Chase and for Larry if they can correctly predict 
the one free agent and the one draft draft eligible player that you would say here on February on March the eighth will be a 49er come camp who with big money on the table is Chase Senior going with. And if you want to go Luke McCaffrey, you can because that's a solid one too. Yeah. Uh, I may go Luke McCaffrey and I'll go first or you can go first, whatever way you want to do it. I'm ready to go. I think in the draft, I'll give you two. Graham Barton falls. He's going to the Niners. Okay. Xavier Worthy at 31, I think is in play. I really do think he's in play. He even said playing alongside Debo and Ayuk would be awesome. Kyle Shanahan's at the Texas building all the time because he's tight with Sarkeesian. I love that offense. So those are two draftees. Um, to free agency, I think Grenard or Bryce Huff fits, again, like that Mooney Ward type of player. Late bloomer, starting to round into form. They're not going to get top of the market money, but right below that. I'm going to go in the draft. I'm going to go with Braden Fisk okay. from Florida I like State. I just think that, you know, uh, I could see incredible things from Braden Fisk in this defense. And uh, in free agency, I'm going to go with Aziz Al-Shair on the comeback. Okay. I like that. I think Aziz Al-Shair on the comeback and Braden Fisk. I could have gone with McCaffrey's brother because that, I think, is very likely too. I, I'm rooting hard for Rook Aurora, but something tells me Braden Fisk, that workout in Indy com combined with the way he looked in the one-on-ones, combined with the way he looked at, isn't he a Western Michigan transfer, right? Who went to Florida yes. state. Yep. Um, I just think that he checks a lot of their boxes. He's going to be, you know, he, I love the motor. I love the, the interior rush, especially if the Niners play games, Braden Fisk, Aziz Al Shair, And you're going once again with who? Uh, I, I went, I cheated a little bit, but uh, Graham Bartner, Xavier worthy at 31. The thing with worthy too returnability in addition to him being a burner and then in free agency grenard or um bryce huff yeah huff huff would be very easy very easy okay so i will go with aziz uh, al shayir and fisk with a side dish of of uh mccaffrey 